Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Christian Publishing Online Summit. This webinar series features 12 acquisition editors and publishing industry executives from a variety of Christian publishing houses, all discussing various aspects of writing and getting published. The live webinars take place through the end of this month, but uh, recordings will be available on the Writing for Your Life website. Uh, before I introduce today's guest speaker, I want you to know that you can ask questions through the chat feature of the Zoom webinar. Just type in your questions and we will try to get to as many of them as we can. So today our guest is Becky Nesbitt. Becky is an executive editor at Penguin Random House, acquiring and editing books for the Convergent and Waterbrook imprints. And I'm sure she'll tell us a little bit more about what exactly that means. Um, during her 25 years in Christian publishing, she's also served in various editorial roles at Tyndale House Publishers and the Howard Books imprint at Simon & Schuster. She's worked with best-selling authors including Karen Kingsbury, Dave Ramsey, Devin Franklin, Francine Rivers, Tony Gaskins Jr., Senator Joe Lieberman, and many others. She holds a BA in print communications with a minor in Bible theology. So this is the first time Becky's done a webinar with us, so I'm really glad to include her as part of the uh, Writing for Your Life family, so to speak, and I'm very glad to have her here with us today. So uh, welcome, Becky. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here with you all, and I am ready to jump in if there's nothing else that you have for me. No, go right ahead. Okay, great. Yes, Brian, uh, thank you for having me. I am thrilled to be able to present um, some hopefully useful information on the process of publishing. And as Brian said, I have been in the industry for more than 25 years. Since 1993, I started working at Tyndale House Publishers um, in the warehouse. So I was so determined to get a job in publishing that I took a job packing books in the warehouse. Actually, I was putting together what uh, back then was called a page a day calendar. When you have calendar, you, there used to be calendars that might sit on your desk and you would tear off a page for every day and it might have sayings like a Bible verse or a Ziggy or a cartoon on the cal calendar. And uh, they were very popular back when I started working in the warehouse. And so my first job was to put those calendars together and then put them in a box and send them down the line for shipping. And then I graduated to um, picking and packing orders because things were not automated back then. And uh, there were different sections of the warehouse where um, different staff would pull books and send, pack them in their boxes and send them on down the line. So um, I did that until a position opened up in the editorial department. And uh, I spent 16 years at Tyndale House, all in uh, the editorial department. Um, and I, have, I worked both on the fiction side as well as the nonfiction side. So uh, after Tyndale House, I moved to Simon & Schuster they have a Christian division called Howard Books, and I was on the editorial side there at Howard Books working on titles like the ones that Brian mentioned. And then just most recently, I moved over to Random House to acquire for their Christian imprints. They have three Christian imprints. Uh, you might know Waterbrook, Multnomah, and Convergent, and they are, uh, they represent various sort of, um, degrees of Christian sort of content. We have everything from uh, sort of theological teaching content on the Multnomah side and maybe some more uh, progressive Christian expression on the Convergent side. And right in the middle is Waterbrook, which is um, what most people would call sort of solidly evangelical publishing. So I work across the imprints looking for titles that would be a good fit uh, at any of those places. So yes, that is an overview of me, and I would love to tell you a little bit about what it means or what it's like to have a book travel through a publishing house, everything from getting started to having the book end up on the shelf. So let me see if I can share my screen, and we'll start out. Sound good? Perfect. Okay. We still have page a day calendars, by the way. Do we? And I actually have one on my desk in front of me, believe it or not. 
What, <laughs> what on wife, earth I might have put that page a day calendar together. You, know? <laughs> you never my know. Wife, uh, my wife works at a Barnes and Noble. And um, so she sees these all the time. And um, she knows that I like pictures like from our national parks or oh, you know, sure. worldwide landscape pictures. So anyway, just for what it's worth, they do still exist and they're very nice. <laughs> well, good. I, I have a fondness for page a day calendars because it kicked off my career. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to talk about an overview of the publishing process. Uh, what I'm talking about is developing a book idea to landing a deal with a publisher to editing, marketing, publicity, and sales. All of that can be a pretty daunting process for the first time author. Actually, even for a fifth, sixth, eighth time author, it can be pretty daunting to have the um, book travel through the system of a publishing house. So let's take an inside look about at how a book is acquired and what happens behind the scenes to get a book from concept to store shelves. So first things first, I am going to talk about what I'm calling years before publication. And whoops, I'm already advanced too far. So many of you are in the process of writing. Maybe you're developing your concept, maybe you're outlining, maybe you've already written your manuscript. Um, no matter where you are in the process, you are years before publication because um, the general timeline for publishing a book with a traditional publisher is about 12 months from the time that your book is turned in. So if you're in the process of concepting, developing, writing, um, and getting your book critiqued, you are in, you're on the right track. And uh, one of the things I like to say at this early stage is um, continue to meet with your peer group, have your book critiqued, have your, I'm sorry, your manuscript critiqued. Um, do whatever you can to be improving and refining your book uh, concept. Uh, when it comes time to pitch your book to an editor, as you know, you need someone on the inside to catch the vision for your book and carry it through the publishing process. So when it comes time to pitch the book to an editor, there are a couple of things you should know. Uh, the first one I, is unfortunate, but also a benefit. Most publishers don't accept unsolicited proposals, so you are going to want to make sure to work with an agent. And I should back up and say there was a time in my publishing career when authors could go through the literary marketplace, which was a guide that showed people who was who inside uh, the publishing house, what they were acquiring. And it was actually a printed edition and uh, aspiring authors would flip through the printed edition to find the name of an editor and what their sort of genre was. And then they would submit according to those guidelines. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of those ended up in what was called a slush pile where there was a general reviewer who might look through the content, um, but really we found it very beneficial in, on the publishing side to work with an agent because um, books that landed in the um, unsolicited pile, um, in my career, I have only seen one make it from the unsolicited pile to a published manuscript. And that's, uh, th there are a lot of factors uh, surrounding that, largely because um, you need to really have an, a contact with an editor, you need to know what the publisher is looking for, you need to know the type of platform the, the publishing house wants, and um, when you have an agent, they will help you identify those things. So the first thing I like to tell uh, aspiring writers is to connect with agents and connect with editors. And the one way you can connect with agents and editors is by attending writers conferences, like the Publishing and Color Conference and the Writing for Your Life Conference, where you get the opportunity to hear from editors and hear from agents the type of books that the agent is looking to represent and the type of books that an editor is looking to acquire for a publishing house. So uh, my advice on this very beginning stage is to uh, look for an agent and attend writers conferences so that you get a real feel for what the uh, marketplace is looking for and what the different publishers or the different editors are looking for. And uh, many of you probably know that if you go to a writers conference there's often an opportunity to meet with editors and talk about your book idea and pitch your book idea. And uh, that's a great opportunity to make a personal connection and to get uh, real-time feedback 
on your book concept. Uh, even if the book is not finished yet, it's a good opportunity to meet with an editor and talk about what uh, areas might need to be elevated, refined, edited. Um, an editor is there to help you uh, move your book into a published stage. So before we even get to the publishing house, the first thing you're going to do is get an agent and pitch your book to an, to, uh, an editor. That agent will do the pitching and um, the agent will talk with me. They know me, agents in the industry, and I have relationships, as do my peers at other publishing houses. And so they know that, say, I'm looking for a book on the Enneagram. I'm going to pick on the Enneagram right now because it's so popular. And uh, the agent might know, oh, Becky and I met, and I'm looking. she's looking for a book on the Enneagram. So if that's your proposal, the agent is going to pitch that to me. And uh, if that proposal is resonating with me, there are a couple of steps that I'll take the book through. And uh, the first step is to take the book to my editorial team. My editorial team is just the editors in my imprint. There's four or five on the Convergent side and a half a dozen on the Waterbrook and Multnomah side. And in that editor's meeting, we spend time talking about the projects that we uh, editors, the fellow editors, have been looking at, maybe projects we're going after, projects that have come in from agents. And um, I will go into my editorial meeting and talk to my team about a book or a project that I have that uh, covers the Enneagram. And I think it's unique because of X, Y, and Z. And I think the author has merit because their platform is a certain level. And I think that this is a good fit for our pro program because we have been looking for a book on the Enneagram. Um, so if all of the editors uh, have a discussion about it and we agree that this really would make a nice fit for the publishing program, then I get the green light to take that project, to take the uh, proposal to the publishing board. And the publishing board is the second of many steps in a, an acquisitions process, but at the publishing board, I'm meeting with my marketing, publicity, Sometimes there's sales folks in the meeting, always my publisher is in the meeting, the associate publisher is in the meeting, um, and then my fellow editors and assistant editors are in the meeting as well. And at the publishing board meeting, I am making a formal pitch to the broader group to talk about your book, your Enneagram book. I'm talking to them about how it has all of the things we've been looking for, and how the author is working hard on the book and the, re and the material reads very well. And that is when my group has the opportunity then to talk back to me and my marketing folks will weigh in and they will say, um, here are the merits of the book from a marketing perspective. Um, there are three Enneagram conferences happening this year. So this is really a great trend for us to be involved in. Um, and then publicity will talk to me about how um, this is a great publicity angle. There are opportunities uh, across the uh, sort of national network or maybe the blogosphere. Publicity is very tied into what's happening uh, in terms of the larger uh, chatter in the marketplace and the larger trends in the marketplace. So really in that meeting, I'm hearing back from my group, from my marketing publicity, folks and from my publisher about the saleability of the product. And sometimes I will hear marketing and publicity will say, this isn't a book that really will work for us. We already have three books in the system or um, we need it to be a different approach. This one is not pitchable. There are a lot of um, conversations about how to make a book work in those meetings. And I really do need to pay attention to marketing and publicity and what they have to say because they will be the ones eventually that will handle your baby, your book, and take it into the world. So um, they give me great feedback. And if that feedback is something that is a green light and my publisher says, great, let's go ahead and move this book 
further down the system or further down the pike, then I get the green light to run paperwork. I get to run my P&L paperwork, which is my profit and loss statement. And uh, all of the editors have to do a P&L um, so that we can identify for our business office the book's profitability. And we will project the number of units we think it will sell. We will talk about how many um, comp titles there are that are similar to maybe an Enneagram book and why this one is unique. We run that paperwork and um, we get the green light once that paperwork is complete to go in meet with the business office. So I, the paperwork travels with me to my various meetings. My next meeting is the business office and they look over the paperwork and make adjustments as needed. And then, um, once that happens, then I get the green light to go and talk with the publisher and the president and do a very quick pitch on the book and why it's a great fit for the program. At this point, um, what I want to demonstrate is that at this point, there have been so many people that have reviewed the material and they have bought in to the material. They are on board with it so that by the time I get to the president, it really is a great opportunity to just talk quickly about the project, but she is trusting that our instincts all along, all of our accountability steps along the way have really been played out. We know what we're doing. And so we, at that point, we'll get a green light. Sometimes we might get a um, question or two that we have to go back and get some answers on. Um, but let's say for the sake of this discussion, traveling through the editorial or traveling through the publishing house, um, I get the green light from the publisher and the president. So then I get to go back to your agent and present your agent with an offer. And at this point, it's very exciting. You, your agent then um, might have three or four offers from other publishers if they've pitched your book to several publishing houses. There might be an auction that happens where um, the different editors will bid on the project. Um, but the bottom line is you've got editors that are interested in your book and you get the opportunity to accept an offer. And then once you accept the offer, um, the fun begins because you go to contract and into the next step of the process. So once you get, once you have your contract signed and you are uh, officially welcomed into the family of your publisher, whether it's Random House or some other publisher, it's a very exciting stage because you're off and running. And at this point, you finish your manuscript or you've already finished it. Uh, frequently, a first time author will be required to have a complete manuscript before they ever pitch the book to a publisher. A long time ago, when I was first started out in publishing, authors were required to submit a uh, synopsis and maybe three complete chapters. And editors were finding that authors often did a great job of writing and refining and editing those first three chapters. And those looked terrific when they came to the publishing house. But then when it came time to uh, actually finish the manuscript. Sometimes that was a challenge for an author because uh, they had spent so much time up on the front end that they didn't have the opportunity to finish the manuscript and it, and it took much longer than they thought. Maybe it became a year or two process. And then that is um, obviously a challenge for the publisher because that uh, slows down the publication process. So now, uh, I think almost every publisher is requiring that authors finish their manuscript before it is ever actually pitched to the publisher. Um, but once it is finished, you will turn it into your editor. And this is generally one year before the book is published. So it is February of 2020 right now. And if you've turned in your manuscript to me today, we are looking at publishing your book in February of 2021. And uh, that process takes a long time for the reasons I will tell you in the upcoming slides. But um, the, once your manuscript is turned in, you go through an editorial review and revision process. And there are entire, manu or entire workshops on this process in particular. I, I teach them and I know lots of my editor peers 
teach them as well. I will just give you the broad strokes, but there are more details if you want them, I know, out there. But the editorial review process is generally you turn in your manuscript and then the uh, editor will take time doing what's called a developmental edit and they will do the 30,000 foot view review of your manuscript and they will look for hot spots, places that need more development, maybe more anecdotes. They're looking for flow. They're making sure the stories make sense. They're making sure that the manuscript uh, hangs together well and reads uh, well and that there's a through line um, from beginning to end. And so the editor does that first 30,000 foot view and then turns it back to the author. The author takes uh, about a month, maybe six weeks to do revisions. And then it comes back to the editor and the editor will review the manuscript again and do what's called a line edit. And the line edit is a little bit more granular. The editor, me, will, I will spend time um, going through chapter by chapter, sentence by sentence to make sure all of the stories that I asked for are right and that the flow is correct and the chapters are in the right order and that there's continuity between uh, the thesis of the project and the actual um, conclusion. If it is a fiction manuscript, I'm looking for uh, character consistency. If the character behaves one way in chapter one but is acting a completely different way by chapter six, um, is there a rationale for that, or do we need to uh, establish the character's motives? That kind of thing. Um, that is happening at the line edit. And then once I'm finished with the line edit, it goes back to you. You will do your revisions. This is a, a back and forth with the editor and author. I love to hear back from the author about what's working. Maybe they don't want to take my direction or they want to take it a different way. Um, it's a dialogue. This is your manuscript, so I want to make sure you're happy with it. And my goal is to make it the very best it can be and um, make your baby the best baby it can be in the, in the marketplace. So um, the editor and author spend a lot of time at this stage going through their revisions and um, working on the manuscript till it's ready and it goes from that line edit stage into copy edit and proofreading. And this is, if we're at 30,000 foot view, then the line edit is getting closer, and then we touch down at copy edit and proofreading. And so that takes another month probably, where we um, have copy editors that will really go looking for grammar and punctuation. And all of the um, style manual is applied at that point so that your your book reads well and is clean. So that is a three to four month process between your editor and uh, you will spend the most time, I think, right here in this stage. This, at the same time though, while you are editing at the same time, your publisher is going to get the ball rolling on informing the rest of the publishing house that this book is coming in a year. So your publisher is going to want some preliminary information from you. They're going to have you fill out some forms. Uh, an author Q&A is really a sort of extensive intake form that the publishers use to um, identify your book to the rest of the publishing house. If I, I am your champion in a publishing house, but if I can't be there to carry your book from meeting to meeting, I can't be in every meeting, that Q&A sort of serves as a general overview because in that Q&A, we're covering everything from the synopsis of your book to the 30-second uh, commercial of your book to your hometown, your network, your platform, um, your connections. Um, if you like to travel, if you are willing to go on camera, if you would rather do uh, podcast tour, all of that is captured in the author Q&A so that um, your sort of overview travels with you throughout the publishing house. Um, you're also going to send in your author photos and at this point you get to submit your cover ideas for the book. Uh, authors I know have from the very beginning a lot of authors have a, an idea in mind what their book might look like and so we like to hear from the author at the early stage what kind of cover ideas you have, and you'll get to submit those. 
So now we're at about the nine, we're just about nine months before publication. And also, um, what is happening? Your editing is, is being finalized, copy editing, proofreading is being finalized. And we in the publishing house are working out the publication date and your list price, and then initial uh, marketing and sales strategies are being worked out. Uh, at nine months, we have our first marketing and sales meetings to talk about these books that are going to be coming out in February of 2021. So um, we take a lot of time on this front, on the front end of marketing and sales so that we can be sure we are setting um, your book up for the right visibility in the marketplace. Um, and sales is weighing in as well. Sales knows um, what other books might be hitting the market at the same time, how books in the same genre have been selling, and they're going to weigh in also with some ideas. They, they will weigh in a little bit on the cover concept as well. Marketing will do that also. Uh, one of the things I'm including here is how you can help build your audience. Um, you have finished writing your manuscript, you've turned it in, it's being edited, and back when I first started publishing, in my career in publishing, that really was where an author had the opportunity to hand off their manuscript and sort of say, okay, whew, I'm done, what's next? Um, and the publisher would take it from there and a lot of the marketing and publicity strategy would be on the publisher. They were buying ads in newspapers and they were buying radio spots and they were doing uh, a lot of the marketing and publicity uh, on their end. A lot of that's changed now because so many authors have an online platform. They have an online following and they know how to reach their tribe very well. We are um, seeing authors that have just tremendous marketing savvy. And so now the marketing is um, uh, shared. The author really does take the opportunity to help build their audience as well. They do things on their side of their uh, tribe to build the audience. So I'm including just a little bit of what we talk to the authors about. It's never too early to develop and grow your online presence and engagement. If you already have an active following, you get to start talking about your new book at this point so that you can help drive pre-orders and you can create a list of your email contacts um, to let them know that your title is available for pre-order. And that simply means that your book is starting to go out onto the online feed. So a pre-order is when the book title and information, the metadata is being fed to the booksellers uh, for all formats. So any of your online retailer, retailers, your Amazon, Barnes & Noble, CBD.com, IndieBound, all of those retailers are starting to get that metadata and they are posting that on their sites so that uh, anyone that hits their site can click buy for your book and that book uh, purchase will be held until the book is actually released and you will get the book shipped to you that uh, on release. And that uh, includes digital formats as well. So you can pre-order the ebook to be released to you on the day that the book publishes. Um, and then also the jacket and design, uh, the jacket and cover process begins. You've sent in your ideas and now the designers in-house are working on putting those ideas together and using their own um, creativity to come up with cover comps for you to review. We start working through the cover process at this point because shortly after all of that metadata is fed, the jacket will show up online as well once we have a finalized jacket. So you are very likely to see eight, seven, eight months before your book is published, your jacket will be there and it'll be ready for pre-order online. At the same time, you can build your audience. You can um, alert your social platform, your social media following um, to the fact that your book is ready for pre-order and you can include purchase links uh, on to your title on your website blog and social media pages. So everywhere you go and everywhere your tribe follows you, they should be able to click to buy and pre-order your book. Now we're at the four to six month mark and your um, publishing and sales team is starting to introduce your book to the brick and mortar accounts. 
So we've posted all of the metadata online and that is an automatic process, but now the sales team is involved and they start making the sales calls. Yes, about six months out, they're calling already on their accounts and they're talking to them about your book and they're making that personal connection uh, with the buyers at the various retailers and they're talking about what type of publicity will be happening around this book, what type of marketing is going to be happening around the book, and what type of platform um, the book already has, what type of visibility you as an author have. And that is when the quantity uh, and placement estimates are happening. So this is a key point in the book publishing process because this is when we start to hear back from the retailers what type of interest there is in the book and what things we can do to elevate the interest in the book. The retailers sometimes will say, um, can the author write a special excerpt for us that we can run online? Can the author be available at our store uh, during this block of time? Anything that uh, the retailer can do to uh, draw consumers into their store is going to help them um, really formulate the right estimate for your book, uh, for the number of books they'll bring into the store. At the same time um, that the sales and marketing team is out and pitching your book, or I'm sorry, at the same time that the sales folks are pitching your book, our publicity team is starting to send bound galleys to the reviewers and media. And we work, uh, we print physical copies of the book, but they are sort of um, cheaper editions of the book because we're loading up the back cover of the book with the publicity description and the publicity contact information and what will be happening on the publicity side. So these go to reviewers, they go to our long lead print media, and they also go to our national accounts to our regional accounts, to our Christian retailers. These bound galleys are the first opportunity for reviewers to dip into your book, review your book, and to provide a review of your book. And uh, the sooner we're able to get those bound galleys out to the reviewers, the better, because those, especially on the print side, those reviewers are working six months out um, they're getting their reviews done for publications that are going to be happening six months later. So we love to get those galleys out so that we can hear the word on your, get the word on your book and start putting online and posting uh, on socials what types of uh, reviews your book is getting. And uh, the better the review, the, the buzz is, the buzz builds based on the strength of your review. And you can start to use those reviews as um, content for your online following, for your friends, for your local retailers. You can start to share those reviews to build interest and generate interest in your book. Um, at the same time that these galleys are going out, you should start thinking about creating bonus content for marketing and online use. And so bonus content would be if you have a website um, and you have written a fiction novel, your bonus content might be some character descriptions um, or some photos of places that you visited while you were researching your book. Um, bonus content for a nonfiction book might be a link to a podcast interview that you've done recently or um, some interesting articles that have contributed to the research that you've done for your nonfiction book. Anything that gives readers a little bit of an inside track about your book and uh, it really just helps to generate interest in the book. Um, now, oops, we are about two to four months before publication. And at this point, orders are gonna be finalized We've, our sales team has met. We've had many sales meetings and discussions. Um, when I am uh, championing a book at Random House, we have at least three sales meetings uh, interspersed between our nine months 
uh, countdown. So I will have I will have pitched the book once. Then I will three months later uh, check back in with the sales team for another sales meeting, and then three months later we will have a final sales meeting where we're talking about the uh, final execution of the book. So the uh, sales meetings are plentiful. There's lots of information that is transmitted. And uh, at the same time, orders are being finalized and the logistics are coordinated for your title to arrive um, before publication. So we, our printers are, um, printing and shipping books so that they're all arriving at very or across the country but at the same time so um, that's happening and you on the uh, author side are working with marketing publicity to provide uh, activities The marketing publicity is providing your plans for publicity whether it's a book tour whether it's a blog tour um, uh, if you're going to be speaking and having a uh, a, a tour of speaking engagements. Publicity is going to tie in with that and help you get books at those speaking engagements. Uh, any promotional activities are being finalized at this point. And also you're going to include the cover design on your social media pages. You're going to um, do all that you can to alert everybody on your social media site of all the tours, blogs, podcasts, anything that you're doing, you're going to be letting people know at the same time, we will be, we will be doing the same on our side of the industry. Uh, four weeks before publication, so we're one month to publication, the publicity team is going to collect and circulate the early reviews of your book and your finished copies will start to arrive in the warehouse and the final press release will be mailed out to the publicity contacts. So publicity will write a press release and send finished books to their publicity contacts so that the media will pick up the book and feature it, uh, run an article, feature you on their program, that type of thing. Uh, you will continue to uh, circulate your reviews through your social media channels and then you can uh, also, if you're going to do a Facebook Live or some sort of online interaction with your fan base, you can start to do that at this point. Maybe it's a countdown to publication. Frequently, authors will say, four weeks out, I'm running a promotion where if I get 50 additional newsletter signups, I will send uh, everybody a copy of the book or some sort of promotional activity is happening at this point. Uh, two to four weeks before publication, this is when you're gonna get a physical copy of the book. At this point, you've only probably seen a galley and you get to hold now the actual book in your hands and it's actually a very exciting moment. All of the blood, sweat and tears that you've put into publishing your book has finally been delivered and you get to flip through and enjoy the um, feeling of holding your published book in your hands. Uh, at the same time, the bookstore orders are picked and shipped to the retailers, and you are going to connect uh, any of your tweets, social activity, all of that, you're gonna connect also to your publisher so that your publisher can be retweeting any activity that you're doing and vice versa, so that we can cross-pollinate across all of the social platforms. Um, one to two weeks before publication, the bookstores are receiving your book and all of the on-sale plans are executed. So uh, this is when you are setting off for a tour or you're doing your speaking engagements or you start to do all of your podcast interviews. Any of those things are happening right now, one to two weeks before uh, your book is uh, actually officially published. Uh, this is really an exciting time, I think, for authors because they get to talk about the book, they get to promote the book, um, they get to enjoy the success of their book being published. And then finally, publication date. This is the moment that you've been waiting for. Uh, your book is available for instant purchase online and in the physical stores. So anybody that has made the pre-order back at the seven, eight, nine month mark. Uh, they're going to be receiving their book now 
and anyone that goes into the bookstores will be able to purchase your book on publication date. And it's a very uh, exciting time. A lot of time authors will do a launch party. I've seen many launch parties happen online, or there might be a uh, launch party in their hometown where they get the opportunity to uh, sign the books and enjoy um, introducing their book to their family, family and friends. Or if they're on a national tour, there might be a launch that kicks off in New York where an author is on a morning show and then they might do a book signing later in the afternoon at um, one of the East Coast stores there. So there's a lot of ways to celebrate the launch of your book. And of course, if you haven't already done so, you would link all of your, um, all of the, all online, you would link to any place that people can purchase your book. And finally, after publication, you continue to build your audience. You continue to let people know where you're going, where you're going to be, what activity is happening around your books. Uh, bring an extra pen when you go to the bookstore because you can sign those books that are on those store shelves. I've been with many authors um, just for a drop-in visit. They will uh, sign and autograph books and um, the bookstores love to be able to have those. Um, and then make sure your publisher knows of any interesting developments related to your title that they can use in their marketing. Maybe you are going to be featured or you've been added to a speaking engagement and you are now a featured speaker or you have been picked up by uh, your local news and they will, your publisher is going to want to know that so that they can tweet out about that. They can let their uh, retailers know in your area that there's some extra, extra activity happening around your book. And uh, that brings me to the end of the publishing process. I hope this gives you some information that will help you as you continue to work on your proposals, manuscripts, and pitches. Wow, that was really helpful, um, <laughs> Becky. It's like, I don't think I've ever heard that much detail described, <laughs> you know, lot. about the end-to-end -end publishing process, So, mm -hmm. which is really, really wonderful because um, you know, just like every other industry that I've participated in, so many of the people within the industry assume that the whole rest of the world knows all the ins and outs of how it works. When in reality, people that have not spent their life in the in particular industry don't understand, you know, everything that happens in terms of all these details, particularly all these behind the scenes things that you've been talking about. So, um, so thank you so much for, you know, sharing all of that. It's a lot of disclosure and, um, I think very insightful for people to really understand, for instance, why does it take 12 months uh, <laughs> yep. after you get a hold of a manuscript or what have you? Yes. Yeah. It, I think it's a really eye opening to discover how much coordination happens behind the scenes and how much uh, cross function happens between the different departments so that your book can be published in it to a great degree of success. That's really what we're after. So I don't think I can think of <clears throat> very many additional details to ask you about <laughs> in terms of, you know, the, um, the, the, all the process steps that you talked about. So, so, so let me ask a couple of other questions if I could. Okay. Um, so maybe you can tell us a little bit more about Convergent and Waterbrook and Mel Multnomah. Are Waterbrook and Multnomah separate or are they the same imprint? That They're separate imprints, yes. They are, okay. I yeah. was confused on that. I thought they used to be and now that they were combined, so. They're separate imprints, and like I said, uh, Multnomah has a variety of conservative uh, theological voices that were really, the, the aim at Multnomah is to help readers with resources to develop their um, walk with Christ. They really want to give readers uh, more in-depth um, material and encouragement on their growth in, in their faith journey. And Multnomah, or Waterbrook uh, is also doing the same. They're providing resources and materials for readers who are looking to uh, live a Christian life and they're looking for ways to do that uh, that intersects with today's culture. And so uh, I had said earlier, I think that um, 
Waterbrook is maybe sort of in that in the middle space. It is um, very accessible sort of understanding of Christianity. And then um, Convergent is uh, maybe a more progressive expression of Christianity. Authors that are looking for a fresh e expression and understanding of what it means to um, live the Christian life in today's culture. It, there are a lot of topical discussions, uh, a lot of topical books that Convergent does dealing with uh, issues that people are facing today. And so lots of voices that speak into um, how to navigate today's culture as a Christian. And so across those three imprints, how do they vary by genre? I guess, or I guess I should ask it a different way. Which genres do the three of those cover? Uh, Waterbrook is the only one that does fiction. All three genres do nonfiction, but Waterbrook uh, acquires and edits fiction. So that would be one distinctive right there. Um, and then on the convergent side, we have memoir, we have lifestyle books, we have sort of contemporary um, theologians, and then also some, um, I would say Christian living books, maybe um, more of a, yeah, Christian living books. On the Waterbrook side, we have lifestyle books, memoirs, uh, Christian living books, as well as fiction, like I said. And we then do some other uh, gift books as well, and biographies and kids books on the Waterbrook side. And then, on the Multnomah side, it's fo it's focused really on Christian living and more theological development. Okay, that's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So, so there's no children's books really in the convergent area. No. Is that correct? That's correct. Waterbrook is where you're going to find the children's titles. Okay. There, I, I think that there have been some uh, <laughs> there Waterbrook titles that will be carried by convergent, but really that's that's where our editor for uh, children's books is sitting on the Waterbrook side. And so other than the Enneagram, what are the other kind of hot topics these days? <laughs> yes. Yes, I have. If I had a nickel for every Enneagram <laughs> book that I received, I might be really rich right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of great sort of um, missional living books, people that are looking for uh, life change memoirs, people that have gone and... Um, done some type of missional work and they are sharing their experience. Um, that's, a, that's a really great topic right now because I think people um, want to know how to navigate culture that, uh, at least here in the West, can be very tricky and challenging when there's so much division and vitriol. And so how is there, is there an opportunity to have a sort of um, discourse that is productive instead of, uh, I would say, polarizing. So there are books, we're looking for some first person narratives in that section. And also what's really hot right now is lifestyle books. I mentioned in my presentation that there are so many um, authors that are coming to us with these terrific platforms. They have been on YouTube and Instagram and um, Facebook and they have built a platform. Um, maybe they are a decorator like Joanna Gaines, or maybe they're an organizer. Maybe they are a lifestyle coach. Whatever they've done, they've really amassed a following. And so what I'm seeing is those people, those influencers who start publishing books. And so I'm getting a lot of influencer books as well. And that, that uh, I see those in the convergent side and on the Waterbrook side, because it just maybe depends on the type of influencer book that they're publishing as to where that would fit with either program. Sure, sure. Well, thank you for reiterating the point that I make to authors like time and time again by beating them over, head, over their heads about platform. You know, that um, that's such an important component these days that, uh, you know, building your following is, I think, the first need, the first plan of attack, you know, and you mentioned it, you know, like kind of years ahead of, of, of publishing a book. Um, so in any event, um, 
Thank you very much for that. And, yes. I, and I know that you've got another commitment that you need to get to. So uh, I want to let you uh, to do that. And, and just thank you again for spending some time with us to give us all these insights and behind the scene look at what a publishing house really does and how they support their authors. Great. Yes. I, thank you again for having me. I am um, honored to be a part of this program and a part of what you've got going. So I appreciate the time and the invitation and uh, let me know if there's anything else you need. Well, thank you so much, Becky. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Have a good day. Bye.